Hey guys, Brother Andy here, uh, recording my first lesson for Sunday School. Uh, this should be the fifth one, and this week we're going to cover a new topic. It's going to be the gods of your fathers. And if you've ever been in my Sunday School class, you know that I typically like to open up and just kind of talk about what we did this past week or what we've been doing. And, well, I haven't seen you guys for a while now, and it's really kind of hard for you to tell me back what you guys have been doing. However, I've thought of that. And I'll tell you what you guys can do to tell me in just a second. But first, uh, first and foremost, what have I been doing? I've been growing this lovely, luscious beard. I know you guys are jealous of it. No, uh, seriously, uh, just kind of been hanging out at the house with Felicity. She's been going through treatment. I'm actually recording this on the 4th of July. So happy 4th of July, belated. Hope you guys had a great time. Hope no one lost any limbs or digits or your fingers. Um, but uh, Felicity is doing well. Uh, we're plowing through treatments. That's what encompasses my life right now is in between my two kids, Ezra and Felicity. And Felicity right now is currently on steroids. And that's interesting. Uh, now steroids, when people think of steroids, sometimes they think of like the buff, make you jacked kind of steroid. But uh, these just kind of help her fight off her cancer. And a side effect of that is we get to see the fullest emotions possible. You think that I'm animated. You have not seen animated until you see almost a three-year-old on steroids. It is one moment laughing and life is great to the next crying because I made her so sad to like angry. And I trust me, I, I'm looking at some of you right now. I have seen some, some fits and I can tell you right now, that Felicity has got all of you beat. I have seen some tantrums that I have never seen before in my entire life. And just bless her heart, keep praying for her. Uh, she's doing great though. Uh, she knocks out treatments like a champ and she's going hard uh, as we continue her treatments. We're nearing the end of the second phase with Felicity. Uh, so we only have one more phase, which is maintenance. And that's kind of a longer phase so I would be so happy to be able to come and see you guys soon, hopefully, uh, and to actually say hello in person rather than over the internet. Uh, and with that said, if you want to tell me uh, all the things you've been doing this entire summer uh, and spring, then reach out to uh, my wife on Facebook. I don't really check Facebook a whole lot. Um, so Taryn, uh, parents help me out here. If your kids want to tell us what you, they've been doing, then just tag Taryn in a post, and I would love to read what you guys have been up to. Uh, and we'll use that in a little bit as well. I want you to tag uh, on Facebook as well. Uh, so with a new series comes a new me memory passage. And this one we can find in John, and I'll put it up here right now. And it says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And that's John 122. So again, let me get that up there. But as many as received him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now, um, I'm going to put that down and we'll see how well you can remember that. We're going to play a quick game. Okay. And here's how you play my game. You remember what that memory verse said. Okay. And with your parents or whoever's with you, maybe your brother or sister, if I say something wrong, I want you to make a <laughs> noise. Okay. Let's practice. One, two, three. <laughs> okay, good. All right, you can get really into it if you want. All right, so here we go. All right. Remember, if I say something wrong, I'll let you look one last time. Okay, here it is. Here's what we're comparing it to. And if you can't read, I'll read it with for you. It's, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. John 121. I'm sorry, 112. And so here we go. I'm going to read it. If you hear a wrong word, go <laughs> All right, here we go. <clears throat> but as few as received him, to them took he power to become the daughters of God, even to them that think on his name, Jimmy 112. Well, I hope, I hope you caught a few there. There are actually, well, there are five mistakes. And it's not but as few, it's but as many has received him to them, not took, but gave his power to become not daughters, but sons of God, even to them that 
not think, but believe on his name. And it's not Jimmy. Sorry, Brother Jimmy, if you're watching this. Shout out to Brother Jimmy. It's actually John, verse uh, chapter 1, verse 12. All right, so <clears throat> let me kind of transition from our memory verse into some things. Let me play this game with you. We'll play a game of, do you need permission from your parents? Okay? And I'll, sh I'll show you where we're going with this in just a second. But we're just going to play a game. All right? Here we go. So all you have to do is at home or wherever you are, if you think that you need to ask permission from your parent, you should probably go, yeah, shake your head, give me a thumbs up, whatever you want to do. Okay? And if you don't think you need permission, you just do it by yourself without asking permission. You need to shake your head. No, I think I could do that. All right, here we go. So do you need permission? All right? So <clears throat> do you need permission to be a witness to a friend? No, we don't need permission to be a witness to our friends. Oh, well, what does it mean to be a witness, Brother Andy? Well, that's just simply living life the way that God intended us to live life, to live it to its fullest and show his love and show his love through our life so that it can it can be received by someone. All right, here's another one. Do you think we need to have permission to go to a friend's house? Yes, you probably should let your parents know and ask them permission if you can just not come home that night and go somewhere else's house. You, you should probably let them know and ask them permission. May I go to someone's house? Do you need permission to learn the memory verse? No! You can look into God's Word whenever you want and memorize that. You can memorize John 1 verse 12 all on your own. You don't need your parents' permission to do that. Um, let's do another one. Hmm. Carson Tip Sword. This one's for you. I, I don't know. I just Anybody out there, this is for you. Alright? Do you need permission to use the stove? Yeah! Yeah, you should probably ask permission. Now, maybe if you're a little older and your parents have trained you on it and showed you what's right and wrong use of a stove. Oh, I've got a good story about Jose Burner. Jose, you remember that the day in daycare with the microwave and that cookie? You needed to ask permission to that, use that microwave, bro. You stank up that whole kitchen for like three hours. True story. So, yeah, you should probably ask permission to use the stove, right? Uh, here's one for the parents. Kids? Any of you, do you need permission to clean your room? No, you do not. Please clean your room. I love clean rooms. Please clean your room. You don't need permission. Uh-oh. Do you think that you should probably ask permission from your parents to eat candy before you eat dinner? Yeah. You probably need to ask permission. I mean, unless it's like Reese's Cups and then you have Brother Andy's permission to see those whenever you want because those are the best. No, I'm teasing. You got you to ask permission. <clears throat> oh, I wish I could look my students in the face and say this. Do you need your parents or your teachers or anyone's permission to study for a test? No, you do not need permission to study for a test. You can just do that. You can just study it. It's amazing. You don't have to have me say, yes, in 1975. What? No, you don't have to have. No, just study it. <clears throat> now, asking permission. <clears throat> How about this? Do you think that you need to have permission to be a part of your family? No, you don't need permission. You just were born. You just are. You're a part of your family. Now, how about this? Here's a quiz for you. Let's do a little family history about your family. Okay? So, <clears throat> parents, help me out. If, if they don't know it, you can give it to them. All right. What is, so pop quiz about your own life. Ready? Here we go, brother. And he's already popping out the quizzes. Here we go. What is the name of... Of your father your daddy what's your daddy's name now for the lesson today we're going to be talking about someone uh, so for our purposes for the lesson it's going to be Jacob I'm gonna say that my dad's name is Jacob okay all right so hopefully you know your dad's name if not 
Good luck to your parents. Uh, all right, now, any of your grandfathers, doesn't matter which one, so just, it's your father. Now we're looking for a grandfather, okay? Whether that's your mom, or your dad's dad, or your mom's dad, doesn't matter. Name of your grandfather, okay? So let's repeat them. Dad's name is Jacob in this case for me, okay? Grandfather's name is Isaac, okay? Now here's the tough one. <laughs> I need to know the name of your great-grandfather, okay? Any of your great-grandfathers. You should have a few, all right? So in this one, it's Abraham. So we're going to say all three of them together, all right? So we got Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham. Now here's what I want you to do. I would love to know the names of your dad, your grandfather, and your great-grandfather. So that's something else. So tell me what you've been doing this summer in the, the posts on Facebook. Next one, I want to know the names of your dad, grandfather, and great-grandfather. Okay? And this is how people would use to introduce each other, right? We, we would say, hi, I'm the son of, in this case, Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham. Can you imagine that? That's how you would, like, introduce yourself? Not even just like, hi, my name's Brother Andy. How are Nice to meet you. No? No. Yes, I am the son of the great man Jacob, Isaac, and of Abraham. Now, this is something that Israelites would have said to each other. But they claim to be children of Isaac and Abraham and Jacob. And why these three? Well, here's why. Because God has spoken some incredible promises to these three particular men. And the one true God of Israel was often called the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Today's lesson is going to be looking into Exodus. And it's going to be about God being revealed. And this is the very first time that God revealed himself, his true nature, to his people. Right? So, I have some help here. So, with Felicity, people have been so generous and so kind. And truly. And it's truly, I'm at a loss of words of people's generosity. But the one thing that we have a lot of now are stuffed animals. I have stuffed animals for days, right? So I have, we had to get an entire bean bag chair, okay? And there's no beans in here, okay? It is literally just stuffed animals inside here. So we're gonna play a little game, all right? And here's the game. I'm gonna read a story. Anytime you hear me say Israelite, okay, I want you to go, hooray, all right? And if you hear Egyptian, you're going to go, boo. All right. So again, here are the rules. I'm going to read a story. If you hear me say Israelite, you say, hooray. And if I say Egyptian, you say, boo. Good. All right. And I'm going to have my stuffed animals help me out here. All right. So here's the story. You ready? Remember, Israelite, hooray. Egyptian, boo. Right, okay. Here we go. Let's talk about an Israelite, hope you said hooray, named Moses. All right, let me find. Here's, <clears throat> here's Moses. Yeah, definitely. That definitely is a Moses. No. Now raise your hand if you've ever heard of this guy named Moses. I've heard of Moses. Felicity's heard of Moses. She has us tell the story of Moses all the time. So, I wish she were awake. She's taking a nap right now. I wish she were awake. She could probably tell us the story of Moses. Is this Moses? No. That's a giraffe. Right. Shortly after Moses was born, there was a pharaoh. And this pharaoh commanded that all the male Israelite babies be thrown into the Nile River to protect her baby Israelite baby boy, Moses Israelite mother <clears throat> placed him in a basket and sent him down the river. And he was discovered by the Pharaoh's daughter. <clears throat> How cute. <clears throat> and was raised in an Egyptian boo, palace as Egyptian boo, royalty. Though raised as an Egyptian, boo, Moses, let me find Moses again. Here we go. Here's a good Moses. 
Moses knew he was actually an Israelite. Hooray! When Moses was 40 years old and still living in the Egyptian boo, palace, he saw an Egyptian guard beating an Israelite. In anger, Moses struck and killed the Egyptian guard. Oh, my goodness. Hiding the dead Egyptian body boo, in the hot Egyptian boo, sand, when Pharaoh, let me find Pharaoh again. Oh, here you go. There's Pharaoh. There we go. Absolutely. Cute and cuddly Pharaoh. Found out he threatened to kill Moses, guys. So let's recap. Moses was born. He was put in a manger, a little, little basket rather, and floating down the river, found by the Pharaoh's daughter, raised as an Egyptian palace. Okay? And he saw someone beating one of his brothers, an Israelite. And Moses killed him. And the Pharaoh found out and was going to kill Moses. So, Moses did the, what anyone would do, really. They ran. Get out of there. They ran. Moses ran for his life. And he ran away into the wilderness. And it was called Midian. Okay? And Moses stayed in hiding for 40 long years. Guys, I'm not even 40. He hid for longer than I've been alive. And I can grow this beard in just 30 years. Think what I could do in 40 years, right? So Moses stayed in hiding for 40 long years. And eventually the old Egyptian boo, pharaoh died in an even meaner new Egyptian pharaoh boo, took over. And suffering, the Israelites, yay, cried out unto God. Deliver us, deliver us, is what they would shout. And God heard the Israelites' cries. And God stepped in. God wanted to prove he was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All of the Israelites, hooray, were slaves in Egypt, right? All except one. There was one Israelite, yay, living out in Midian. Moses. No, that's not Moses. Let's find Moses. There's Moses. God had a plan. He wanted Moses to lead the Israelites, hooray, out of Egypt. But first God had to speak to Moses. Now, how do you think God chose to talk to Moses? Let me ask you a question. Has anyone found something to be on fire that probably shouldn't have been on fire? Jose, you've got that cookie, man. That, that cookie should not have been on fire, but it was, right? Now, now, I'll tell you a story real quick of a time that I found something that was on fire that it shouldn't have been. So I think some of you guys have heard me tell stories at the time that I was in a coal mine, right? I worked in a coal mine in the summer, and uh, underground, they use conveyor belts, big old rubber belts that move all the coal out of the mine that they dig. And... Those conveyor belts move really fast, right? And sometimes when things, if you rub your hands really fast together, what happens? It starts getting hot. And that's what this conveyor belt was doing. It was rubbing up against something that it shouldn't have been rubbing on. And woof, the conveyor belt caught on fire. And I was one of the first people to find it. Me and my coworker, we were just, we smelled the smoke. We needed to know where it was coming from. We turned the corner. And it's not good. Guys, did you know that coal burns? And so fires in a mine that's full of coal is really bad, right? So my coworker just stood there in absolute horror. And I don't blame him because it was scary. There was smoke, it stunk really bad, and there's stuff all around us that can burn. And instead of just, he stood there like, during the headlights, stood and froze. And I immediately was like, boom, we got to do this, right? So I ran as fast as I could. I yanked on the fire alarm, set off the fire alarm in the whole mine. Okay. I grabbed the nearest extinguisher and started putting out the hose. I had to tell my buddy, I said, call someone to come help us. And there we go. I saved, kind of. I helped save, right? That conveyor belt from catching all the way on fire. 
And who knows what would have happened. A fire in a mine is really bad. So we were, I'm really thankful that I had the presence of mind to do something. So why I say that, my buddy, right, was just frozen. Didn't know what to do. I, on the other hand, thankfully, had the presence of mind to act, right? So here we go. God needs to talk to Moses. So what does God do to get a hold of someone's attention? Well, he decides that he's going to, you know, I'm going to catch this bush on fire, and I'm going to go down there, and I'm going to talk to Moses. Burning bush. Sure am. You know, that'll get someone's attention. If I was just walking through, and Moses was watching sheep, by the way, and that's got to be, honestly, kind of boring, right? you got to find them water and some food, and you kind of, you know, make sure that there's nothing going to get them. But other than that, you're just, you know, hanging out. And you're just walking up over a hill, and all of a sudden, you just see a burning bush? I don't know if I would have looked like my coworker that day where I just was looked in awe and wonder. I don't know if I would have been alarmed and looked around or tried to put it out with something. I don't know what I would have done. But I know, I know this. Let's, let's continue to read this story of what happens. I, I know that I, it would be incredible. When Moses saw this bush, the bush said his name. Have you ever had a bush say your name? I have not. It said, Moses. Moses, man, I would have lost it right there. I would have thought I need to get a drink of water because I'm about to pass out. This burning bush is talking to me. And when Moses heard God's voice, instead of, I don't know what I would have done. I don't know. He says, Moses says, here I am. <laughs> Can you imagine this, guys? He's in the middle of a desert, basically, with a bunch of sheep, right? And... There's a burning bush that says Moses, and he says, yo, what's up? Hi, man. Here I am, I. Here I am, man. What? And God says, don't come any closer, Moses. Take off your sandals. You're standing on holy ground. So go ahead, if you're wearing socks or shoes, go ahead and take those off real quick if it's appropriate. If not, don't. Okay. And then God told him, take off all the, we're on holy ground, right? God told Moses, who he was. He revealed himself to Moses. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Although raised an Egyptian, boo, Moses knew all Israelites, hooray, were descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In fact, Abraham was the great, 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 great grandfather of Moses. When God revealed himself by referencing Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God wanted Moses to remember God's promises and his faithfulness. I can't imagine being revealed in that moment of who God was. Wow. God's a burning bush. No, no, there's more to the story. Let's pick it up. There's not more than just the burning bush, right? <clears throat> From there, God revealed his plans for Moses. Remember, his people are slaves in Egypt. Even though Moses wasn't perfect, remember, have any of you guys ever killed anybody? I haven't. I don't, I don't think you guys have. So you guys think you're bad or you do bad things? And granted, all sin is the same, and we do do bad things. But God can use imperfect people. He can use murderers to do his will, to fulfill his promises. God wanted to use Moses in a mighty way. Moses eventually led the Israelites, hooray, out of the Egyptian slavery, boo, and brought them to the Abraham's promised land. So over these next few lessons, we're going to learn about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All three of these guys, guess what? They weren't perfect, but they were empowered by God. And that's the key. God did the empowering to do great things for God's kingdom. The same God who made promises to them, guess what? Has made promises to us. So this is what I want us to do. I want us to real quick, we're going to have a word of prayer real quick. So everybody close your eyes right where you are. I don't care if you're in your living room or you're watching this uh, in the kids' church room or you're watching this on your mom's cell phone. I don't care. Close your eyes real quick. We're just going to have a word of prayer.
Jesus, we're so thankful for God, for who you are, Jesus, and revealing yourself to us, Jesus, that we can live uh, empowered, not by what we do, Lord, but who you are, Jesus, and what you allow us to do. Thank you so much, Jesus, for that power that you've bestowed upon us. And Jesus, help us remember the story about Moses and about revealing yourself to us and about how you can use imperfect people. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so here's homework. I told you that you're going to use Facebook one more time. So tell me what you've been doing this summer. Tell me the names of your father, your grandfather, and your great-grandfather. And last thing I want you to do is I want you to try to remember all the animals or characters that you saw, those stuffed animals, and post them. And tell me who I was referring to to each one. That's going to be some homework. You might have to watch it again. All right, love you guys. I can't wait to see you guys real soon, I hope. And we will talk to you guys later.